When the time came that this creature should visit those holy places where our Lord lived and died, as she had seen by revelation years before, when, for the joy that she had and the sweetness that she felt in the conversation of our Lord, she was on the point of falling off her ass, she asked the parish priest of the town where she was living, Lynn, to say on her behalf from the pulpit that if there were any man or woman who claimed any debt against her husband or her, that they should come and speak with her before she went. And, and she, with, with God's, God's help, help would settle, settle up with each of them, so, so that, that they, they would, would hold themselves, themselves content. content. And so, and so she, she did. did. Afterwards, she took leave of her husband and of the holy anchorite, who had told her before the sequence of her going and the great distress that she would suffer along the way. And when all her companions abandoned her, how a broken-backed man would escort her on her way in safety through the help of our Lord. And so it happened indeed. Then she took her leave of Master Robert and asked him for his blessing and so took leave of other friends. And then she went on her way to Norwich and offered at the Trinity. And afterwards she went to Yarmouth and offered at an image of Our Lady. And there she boarded her ship. And soon after, because of prompting by some of her companions, her confessor was displeased because she ate no meat, and so were many of the company. And they were most annoyed because she wept so much, and spoke all the time about the love and goodness of our Lord, as much at table as in other places. And so they rebuked her shamefully, and chided her harshly, and said they would not put up with her, as her husband did. When she was at home in England. When this creature and her companions had arrived at Constance, she heard tell of an English friar, a master of divinity and the Pope's legate who was in that city. The company made a great deal of complaint about this creature to the legate and said absolutely that she could no longer be in their party unless he would order her to eat meat as they did and leave off her weeping and that she should not talk so much about holiness. Then the worthy doctor said, no, sirs, I will not make her eat meat while she can abstain and be the better disposed to love our Lord. Whichever of you all who made a vow to walk to Rome barefoot, I would not dispense him of his vow whilst he might fulfil it, and nor will I order her to eat meat while our Lord gives her strength to abstain. As for her weeping, it is not in my power to restrain it, for it is the gift of the Holy Ghost. As for her talking, I will ask her to stop until she comes somewhere that people will hear her more gladly than you do. The company was extremely angry. And so she had great and continual tribulation until she came to Jerusalem. And before she arrived there, she said to them that she supposed they were annoyed with her. I pray you, sirs, be in charity with me. For I am in charity with you, and forgive me if I have annoyed you along the way, and if any of you have in any way trespassed against me, God forgive you for it, as I do. And so they went on into the Holy Land until they could see Jerusalem, and when this creature saw Jerusalem, she was riding on an ass. She thanked God with all her heart, praying him for his mercy, that just as he had brought her to see this earthly city of Jerusalem, he would grant her grace to see the blissful city of Jerusalem above, the city of heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ, answering her thought, granted her desire. Then, for the joy that she had and the sweetness she felt in the conversation of our Lord, she was on the point of falling off her ass, for she could not bear the sweetness and grace that God wrought in her soul. Then two German pilgrims went up to her and kept her from falling. One of them was a priest, and he put spices in her mouth to comfort her, thinking she was ill. And so they helped her onwards towards Jerusalem. And when she arrived there, she said, Sirs, I beg you, don't be annoyed, though I weep bitterly in this holy place where our Lord Jesus Christ lived and died. Some
would wish her in the harbor in her floods of weeping sunk. Some would say it was an illness or the ravings of a drunk. Or wicked spirits. Some say they are unladylike, unsaintly and untrue. Some curse her bloody tears with oaths to turn her white robe blue. Like wicked spirits. Some would shake her very gently by the roaring seething throat. Some would shake her very gently by the roaring seething throat. Some would shake her very gently by the roaring seething throat. Some would wish her on the ocean in a bottomless boat. Some cart that she's a holy Joe, she takes no meat, no wine. Makes an altar of high table and keeps crying all the time. With wicked spirits. Some say march for the love of Christ. No ass could bear your folly. Her confessor chides, chill out or get it's a pilgrimage, a dolly. Of wicked spirits. Then they went to the church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, and they were let in on the one day at evensong time, and remained until evensong time on the next day. Then the friars lifted up a cross and led the pilgrims about from one place to another, where our Lord had suffered his pains and his passion, every man and woman carrying a wax candle in one hand. And the friars always, as they went about, told them what our Lord suffered in every place. And this creature wept and sobbed as plenteously as though she had seen our Lord with her bodily eyes, eyes suffering his passion at, at that, that time. time. Before her, in her soul, she saw him in truth by contemplation, and that caused her to have compassion. And when they came up onto the Mount of Calvary, she fell down because she could not stand or kneel, but writhed and wrestled with her body, spreading her arms out wide, and cried with a loud voice as though her heart would have burst apart. For in, in the, the city, city of, her, of soul, her soul, she saw truly and freshly how our Lord was crucified. Before her face, she heard and saw in her, in her spiritual, spiritual sight the mourning of Our Lady, of St. John and Mary Magdalene, and of many others that loved our Lord. And she had such great compassion and such great pain to see our Lord's pain that she could not keep herself from crying and roaring though she would have died for it. And this was the first crying that she ever cried in any contemplation. And this kind of crying lasted for many years after this time, despite anything that anyone might do. And she suffered much contempt and much reproof for it. Our lady never cried, so why do you? When my prayer had doused the fire For joy of weeping on his passion abused Brooding on one's own woes does not aspire <laughs> 